Hello again, in this video we're looking at the complete beginner's guide to 3D texturing. We'll be looking at basic texturing, hand painted textures, PBR textures, and which ones to use and when. So firstly, what is texturing? Texturing is building up a material for an object, so basically complex colouring in. Some programs use layers like Photoshop, with each layer affecting the material in a different way. Others use a series of connected nodes, like Blender's Cycles, and each of these nodes affects the material in different ways. Nodes tend to be preferred by most professionals as it's easier, especially once you get used to it, for more complex materials. Unity, for example, recently implemented a node-based texturing system into their game engine, much to the delight of most of its user base. So what's the difference between materials and textures? Well, a material is all the properties that make up an object's look. So it's color, bumpiness, glossiness, and so on. A texture is placed onto a material for one of these effects. So if we take a wooden floor material, that would be made up of several textures, the color, the gloss, the bump, and so on. So many textures make up a material. These textures can be hand painted, taken from a photograph, which can be painted on with a stencil or placed on, or you can procedurally generate them, which is basically getting the computer to make the texture. Artists might prefer hand painted and some use stencils. Coder types might prefer procedurally generated as they're more technically based and they might use stencils where there is slightly less artistic skill required. I think it's important at this point to mention that whenever you're adding textures to your object, your program needs to know how to fit those textures onto the object. So generally, you'll need to unwrap it. I'll probably do a video on this shortly, so look out for a card in the corner and a link in the description soon. Also, there's links in the description for how to set up for hand painting, how to set up for stencils, and I'll do one soon for procedural texturing. So let's look at different types of materials. There are two different types of materials as I see it. There's basic materials, and hand painted would come under this, and then there's PBR which stands for physically based rendering. A basic texture might be made up of a color and a bump, and as a beginner, that's a good place to start. This type of texture, along with hand painted, has issues. They don't react to environments, so in terms of realism, they're limited. They can, however, be really great for a nice stylized look. A PBR texture is different. PBRs are designed to react to the environment, and therefore are very realistic. So for any realistic style game, film, or maybe architectural visualization, you'll want to use a PBR texture. There are four main textures that make up a PBR material, and most 3D software now has support for this in the same way. The first is color, which is your main texture, sometimes called albedo, and obviously that's the color that's coming through. Then there's metallic, this tells us which part of the object is metal and which is not. This is important as metals react differently to light. Then there's a roughness, glossy or smoothness. Different programs give different names, but this controls how shiny the model is in different places. And lastly comes the bump or normal map texture. This controls the bumpiness. This is preferable to modeling all the bumps as it saves a great deal of render time. And when all these textures are combined into the PBR, they react to the environment, so it's very versatile and can be very realistic. So here I am with my Spartan Warrior in Sketchfab, which is an online place where you can post your 3D models. You can also purchase 3D models there. It's really great because you can look at the textures, and I'm gonna use this as an example. For this model, I've followed a PBR workflow, but also it's a hand-painted PBR workflow. So there's a bit of both going on. Down here, I can go to the model inspector and I can start looking at the details of the model and its material. So let's start with a basic model with no materials. So this is showing the basic geometry. It's very low poly. If I put the wireframe on, you can see. So this is suitable for a game, maybe even a mobile game. And if I turn the normal map on, you can see the detail come back just from that normal map, but it hasn't increased the polys. That's because a normal map just tells the render engine how to bounce the light off the model. So it's very useful for not increasing render times, but increasing detail. And I've taken this information from a high poly sculpt that I did. Let's look at the base color. I'll turn the wireframe off. And you can see the base color looks very flat. Base colors can be even flatter than this. I've actually, because it's hand painted, drawn in some highlights and shadows, as you can see there. But that's not always necessary, but it just went with the style that I wanted. Let's look at the metalness next. So you can see that uses a black and white mask. The white is true and the black is false. So the white is metal and the black isn't. As you can see there, 
and if I turn it back to the final render you can see the impact that has because metal reacts to light in different ways to non-metallic materials. Then lastly we have the roughness and this is the roughness map. So this uses grey scales so the parts that are black-ish aren't very rough and the parts that are white are more rough. So this area will be more shiny than this area. So if I go to my final render and I move the light by holding alt and left clicking you can see the shininess coming through of our background. Now if I choose another model that's only hand painted, like this one here, I've now gone into the model settings, which you can only get to if you own the model, but here I can change the backgrounds. Now if I change this background, it's a very yellowy background at the moment, and I change it to a dark colored background, it doesn't have that much effect, and I'll keep changing through. It does affect the light and how much light is coming onto the model, but obviously there's no reflections in this, and you can see none of these backgrounds are having that much effect more on the shadows than anything. And if I move my light around, you can't see any reflections. You can just see shadows. Obviously the color is having some influence, but not a great deal. So let's do the same with the Spartan Warrior. So again, here I am in the settings, and this time if I change the background and I move it around, you can see the different background and the light and the purples, for example, and yellows coming through these shinier bits. So hopefully you can see how this ends up being more realistic than just hand painted and you should be able to see the colors influencing the object much further. Roughness is very important and it often separates amateur models from professional models, as amateurs often leave this step out. It's worth noting that the roughness value here I've actually painted on and I've thought about where the highlights might be and the object brushes up against things and therefore is more shiny. Even the skin has variations of shininess across it. So my base color was painted my metalness I did actually paint, but that's fairly straightforward. Roughness I painted, and lastly the normal map I took from my high poly sculpt, which was all done in Blender. So what type of materials and textures should you use, and when should you use them? Well as a complete beginner I would just recommend using a simple colour, doing low poly work and adding different colours to it, and getting used to how colours interact with each other. Then I would advance to actual textures. You can paint these on, or you can find just pictures, and images and add them to your materials. After that you can try bump maps and normal maps and once you've got the hang of that you can try using the full PBR workflow by using the glossiness and roughness and using things like the metallic. For a different approach there's hand painted textures and they can look great for a stylized look and once you get used to that you can start figuring how to paint PBR textures. So hopefully that's given you a good rough overview of texturing and materials. Do check the links in the description for further tutorials and texturing tutorials. Also, I hope to be putting together a website which categorizes and lists all the tutorials, so it will be easier to find things and it will act like a learning flowchart. So look out for that link in the description of this video and subsequent videos. And for those that are getting fed up with beginner tutorials, I will be putting together intermediate tutorials and more advanced tutorials soon. Thanks for watching.